of the Historical Society's uh, second Saturday for October. Welcome to the Jefferson Project. Um, how many of you have been here before? No. Okay, well, no, welcome. <laughs> welcome. We're going to learn all about it. Uh, my name is Stan Fitzpatrick. I'm Education Coordinator for the Historical Museum of Bay County. I want to make some announcements before we start. Um, immediately following this presentation, Abram's going to offer anyone interested tours of the buildings. We'll be able to go into the upper floors, right? Yeah. Okay, yep, wherever Abram takes us. Um, next, next month, our uh, November 2nd Saturday, will be at Studio 23. That's Saturday, November 12th. Um, at Studio 23 down on Water Street. Um, also at 3 p.m. today, if anyone is interested, the Trombie House will be open for an open house. So if anyone else is curious about another building in town they may not have been at, um, that is on JFK Drive right across from the Bay County Community Center in Veterans Memorial Park. Um, also, the last of my House Half Mile walking tours are going to be on um, Friday, October 21st at 1 p.m. and tickets are also available for that. So without further ado, um, I'm going to introduce Avram Golden. He is the owner of Golden Gallery down on 3rd Street. He is a fine art and commercial photographer, entrepreneur, organization and maintainer of the 3rd Street Star Bridge, Raise a Flag Bay City also. Um, he's also a graduate of Delta College, Lansing Community College, and Northwood University, and he's founder of the Jefferson Project. So without further ado. <clears throat> Well, it's, it's great to see everybody out tonight, um, or today. It's, um, and Sam, uh, Mike, thank you for organizing this. Uh, th has anybody been in this building before? What was your, uh, when, when were you here? When, when, when it was operating as? Riverside Storage. Riverside Storage, <laughs> yep. When we built our house, I stored my furniture here. Okay. And that, that's what it was for about uh, 40 years. What? We did an estate sale out of this building many years ago. Yep, I hear a lot of people talking about that. Yep, and there's still a lot of items here in the building as, we, as we'll go through afterwards and uh, f find out. All right. Um, there's, there's some chairs up front as well. All right, so this building, um, I mean, you ask one out of, uh, you ask 10 people, one person's gonna be familiar with what this, uh, where this building is. Uh, where is First and Jefferson? And we hope to change that with this uh, project. Um, this building was built in 1902, 1903 for, uh, by Hammond Seed Company. Uh, that's the four story side. Um, that was originally, you know, a, a cereal and seed company. They'd ship the items, you know, throughout the world. Um, and that was based here. The train tracks would come up on the side of the east side of the uh, building and they would ship them, um, you know, as far as Africa, you know, sh uh, et cetera. The two-story side was built, um, how m it was maybe 10 years later, eight to 10 years later, uh, it was sold to <laughs> Lee and Katie um, Grocer. Like, uh, uh, it was one of the bigger grocery companies, wholesalers in the, uh, the country at that time. And I think that's when they added the uh, two-story uh, two side that we're on currently. Um, so when we, when we tour through on the other side, you'll see big solid wood beams reinforced with Bethlehem steel. This side is all solid I-beam construction. I mean, uh, when I first got in this space, these floors were covered with uh, the blue carpet that you'll see in that front office area. Um, and we redid really them. This is oak flooring. The rest of the building has uh, maple flooring. Maple flooring is apparently uh, harder um, and you know for the uh, warehouse activities that they were running uh, the stuff around but it's beautifully made you couldn't um, you couldn't make a place like this it just it would be so cost exorbitant uh, it, it wouldn't happen um, there's a uh, one-story back portion here that was part of the original uh, that's a loading dock here it's got two skylights it's um, very solidly built as well um, the rail trail actually runs down First Street. I don't know if many of you have uh, used that trail, but um, it's a huge uh, incentive to potentially build up this and make it a nicer area of town and, uh, you know, for the, for the further uh, things that we're looking at doing in this uh, space. All right, so <clears throat> um, after that, Jenison Hardware had purchased this. It was known as a warehouse number three. So obviously you're familiar with the Jenison um, over on the riverfront, but this was the main main portion. A lot of the items in here I've been finding on Facebook Marketplace, uh, you know, to accommodate these things. This piece came out of Midland. This Jenison uh, book actually I think came out of uh, Pinconning, but it's probably the original one of the original uh, 
books um, that they had in this uh, space. The guy was pretty interested in bringing it here and sharing it with uh, the space. Um, a full, full catalog. So if anybody wants to look at that afterwards, feel free. Um, so the things that we're looking at doing in the uh, building is making a, a maker space. You know, there's a need for workforce development and um, uh, those, those type of activities. So the, the back of this uh, first floor in the back when we tour through, we're looking at doing CNC routing tables, woodworking equipment, those type of activities. Um, on the uh, second floor, it's a big grand space. Uh, we're looking at making a uh, event space up there and possibly a photography uh, museum as a backdrop to that event space. The uh, third floor, we're looking at putting 3D printing and an innovation lab. Um, 3D printing is one of the new uh, processes for doing prototyping and um, you know, artists use them, engineers use them. And we're trying to bring that to the forefront of uh, Bay City. And we're also, on the top floor, we're looking at putting apartments. Uh, I don't know, how many do you, do you know uh, John Meyer? He was an architect for you know, Times Lofts and the Legacy Building and a whole variety of other projects. Well, he was a customer of mine over at the, um, the gallery, and he comes in one day, and I said, John, he, he went to high school with my dad. That was another commonality over at uh, Bay City Central years ago. But uh, I, I got to talking and I said I was interested in purchasing this uh, building. And he says, hey, we have drawings on this building uh, from 2015. They were going to do uh, lower, low income housing. It was contingent on MEDC funding that fell through, but he still had these preliminary drawings. So he shared those with me. So that was, that was something early on that um, a community member you know, had given me that sort of helped along with this uh, process. Um, and all right, so we have the rail trail down here. Um, again, this street isn't known by many. Um, and we have this, this blank space of the uh, county building. So what we were looking to do to activate that space is you know, projections and with the green space, the opportunity to put uh, sculpture. So uh, you add these elements and with what we're looking at doing in the building, which is combining art, technology, manufacturing, and community, you have the makings of an art district. Um, and that's sort of where the epiphany of uh, talking to all the different art organizations in the area and say, hey, let's bring these things to um, a one concentrated place where it doesn't make sense for Studio 23, Creative 360, these other organizations to have these large items, let's say a big printmaking wheel, big CNC routing tables, these woodworking equipment. Collectively, we could utilize these uh, items and uh, be a beacon you know, for our community with art and technology and the manufacturing portion. So I, I don't know, have you guys traveled and seen uh, projections as they do like down in Detroit and other areas they are doing uh, projection mapping, interactive projections on buildings? It's a pretty magical and engaging you know, component. So we're trying to uh, work with the county to do a presence um, on the back of the county building, possibly on the back of the uh, go-to transport and with these sculptures and these projections. And at the end, I have a two-minute video that I'd like to show you that vision we, we put together, and it'll help uh, formulate that uh, thought. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful rendition. And um, Tuesday, I forgot to show people. So today, if you stick around, I'll show you that one. Um, we also have Jefferson Street, which is a lightly traveled road. A lot of people don't um, currently use that. It's, it's gravel. It's not paved. Um, there used to be some residential housing here. Um, but we're looking at possibly closing that street down for parking and um, uh, activities, you know, for farmers market, et cetera. Um, and we might have some lights strewn across, like the uh, Third Street, you know, Star Bridge. You know, do something on Jefferson, possibly the Jefferson Star Bridge. Um, it's still in development. Uh, this is another parcel that uh, was purchased with this property, and also this uh, portion. This back portion, which uh, we'll tour through, will be um, uh, you know, an outdoor event space. We have some illustrations showing what that would look like in the back of the building um, with a, a partial indoor. So the opportunity for event spaces is on the second floor, on top of the uh, third, second floor this side, but on the inside uh, second floor. In the back area, indoor and outdoor, and then this space. This can accommodate, obviously, we have probably 45 people here right now. Um, but we'd, we can have three distinct event spaces without everybody stepping on each other's toes. And you have uh, the downtown that you can um, you know, go to for 
different things meeting up, etc. Uh, have a drink before you come to the event. I don't know. Um, this, so this and this uh, parcel that came with the building, I was looking at doing the sculpture a park or a sculpture, uh, yeah, a little sculpture park. But the opportunity was quickly realized that this land is available um, and this uh, building. So we're looking at acquiring that for workforce development with welding, blacksmithing, and possible glasswork activity where we have artists and residents and uh, workforce development uh, opportunities. And um, with all the programming that's been successful in downtown, we're in need of more green spaces. Uh, I think this is an ideal location for a green space. Uh, being on the back of the rail trail um, and to have it filled with sculpture and have it lit at night so people feel you know comfortable to be here at uh, all hours sort of as a, a refuge for downtown um, but the more people I'm talking to everybody's connecting with this opportunity this idea so we keep on moving forward uh, we've been passing around I don't know we, we had pamphlets of letters of support from different organizations um, and it seems to be resonating with people, so we keep on, you know, pushing forward. We've got a steering committee, and we're building the boards, both for the nonprofit arm and also for the uh, building, to help, you know, uh, finalize this uh, vision. Does anybody have any questions? Shoot. There's a tree, which is my favorite tree in all of Bay City. That's right over there, and it's like hollowed out yep. kind of tree, and it's the awesomest tree ever. And I've been painting it and photographing it in love with this building since I moved to Bay City and and I live I walk by it almost every single day and walk around it that's are you like putting I don't plan on disturbing that tree okay. it's, <laughs> it's it's uh it, it seems like it's a willow willow tree yes, and it 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 had fallen down um yeah it's this big cavernous huge tree that just won't uh, stop living. It's making to be sculpted and painted and I mean, yep. a lot of projects have been done with that tree already. So what, one of the projects that we did early on, uh, a few months ago, we had a partnership with Studio 23. Studio 23 was one of the first organizations I reached out to with the idea for the art uh, collaboration. They have limited room where they're at, um, and there was talk that they might be looking for additional um, uh, spaces, you know, for more classrooms, etc. So I reached out to Tara, who was the executive director at that time, and had her come through and uh, look at it, and she sounded favorable of the idea of this. So I, I reached out to other art organizations at Saginaw Valley, Delta College, and I kept on, I kept on resonating as um, a need and an opportunity that's not being fulfilled. Uh, this is one of the paintings by Bruce Frank. Um, he was, we, we had a, a plain air event with Studio 23, like I said, a few months ago, and this is one of the uh, paintings that he did. He's a veterinarian in town who started painting only a few years ago and started taking classes out at Studio 23. Uh, there was eight or nine other art, artworks. I just didn't have enough time to print them all, but um, this is kind of a neat thing to showcase uh, of what artists are communicating with the building so far. We're, we're trying to get more artists involved in the space to build up these, um, these items to help communicate on the outside of the building uh, before we get the rest of the interior uh, uh, built on. Um, so where'd you move from? Grand Rapids area. Okay. So how, okay. So what, what do you think of Bay City overall? I love it. It's, it's big enough to be interesting and it's small enough to feel safe. So I yeah. like it. I love all the trees. I, I live only a block and a half from here. Okay. I live in the high rise building, just east of here. Yep. And so that's where I walk down the river and this, it's, it's a wonderful building. I pet it and touch it, it's just, it's very, <laughs> it's very tactile kind of building. I really it's lovely. Yes, and I'm, I'm the activities director in the high rise. Okay. And so we've done a lot of art classes and come over here and taking pictures and now we're going to paint and, but of, of this particular area. So when I heard about it, I was just, yes, very happy about that. I, I think it would be a great compliment, you know, to, to the uh, um, people living in that, um, high rise, you know, to have something so close, you know, with this sculpture park and um, really, like I said, activate this uh, portion of town. Because a lot of people are, you know, they have to travel two or three uh, blocks to, you know, get to the food and different places downtown. This this lap or uh, place a little bit more local. And if we do farmer market activities or those other market activities, I think it would be very favorable to downtown, but also to the, uh, the high rise. Um, sculpture. But yeah, that, that's that's the idea. I mean, um, d during the uh, pandemic, there was uh, the realization that people 
we need our own manufacturing presence. Um, we need to innovate. We need to start doing things more localized. And uh, I was uh, purchasing the building around that same time, and you know they had these ARPA funds out there asking the community, you know, what what do you uh, what do we need? You know that type of thing. And it really pointed me in this uh, direction that. We need an innovation lab. Why can't Bay City become an innovation hub of uh, Michigan? You know, we have the support of Saginaw Valley, Delta College, and all these other organizations. We, this could be a pinnacle space where engineers, artists can come together, uh, do prototyping with the, uh, the CNC routing, the 3D printing, um, and communicate it with the uh, projections and the artwork surrounding uh, this area. And if we have these artists and residents activities ongoing, it can help communicate, you know, throughout our city and throughout the region. You know, um, we don't have places where you can build large, large sculpture, or do uh, the prototypes and, or the camaraderie of bringing artists, you know, together. Just once you're out of college, once you're out of school, where do you go? You have places like Studio 23 and Creative 360. This is another place that would be a little bit, um, you know, very complementary to that, um, but offer things that those uh, they aren't offering. Um, because they don't have space, you know. That's so. That's that's the whole thing. I mean, I when I started this a uh, few years ago, I it was a very intimidating project. You don't know, uh, but the support with Infuse uh, Great Lakes Bay, Jennifer Acosta and Wayne Hoffman. I don't know if you know those two names, but they started up Infuse, which is an incremental development course in the region. Uh, Jennifer Acosta, who has developed a few properties downtown, she said, "Avi, you should really look at this." Um, uh, course we're having coming up. Uh, I took it and by the end of it, uh, she's, I was apparently head of the class of, you know, 30 or 40 people from all the uh, groundwork that I've already done, you know, getting these drawings and, you know, talking to all these uh, people. So the, um, the amount of uh, help in the community is very favorable. I grew up here, so I have a lot of contacts like John Meyer coming in to get, you know, some things framed and, hey, he's got drawings on this space. And then, uh, these, um, it's a very hometown project. That's how I felt so far. People are really wrapping their arms around it. Um, and that's, that's it. I, I need another question. Anybody? Sh shoot. Do you, I, I'm hearing artists a lot. Yep. Um, I grew up in Bay City and then left for 35 years and just recently came back and I'm an artist. I'm looking for studio space to work in. Are you planning to have any rentable studio space for artists? Um, yes. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. We'll have some, and if, if we run out, we'll definitely have a short list of other places we could point you uh, toward. Um, yep. There was a thought when you mentioned that. I'll come back to it, though. All right. Anybody else? Shoot. So how's the project going? It's going well. I mean, we, we have bids from three of the uh, area builders. We have two architectural firms that have come through. Uh, we have all... All of the information, we're still uh, gathering support and we're just starting to pitch. We're working with the MEDC. Uh, we had Lieutenant Governor come through here and do a full tour. We had a representative from Whitmer's office come through here on Tuesday. Um, Timmy Beeson has come through. Uh, we're really connecting the dots and uh, Jim Barsha, you know, the, the list is long as far as um, people who are familiar with this project and it continues to. Um, you know, get get more support, and people are seeing a need for something like this. Uh, I, I can't remember; the, it was just shown to me last night. But there was a, a project down in Flint, the Mott Foundation funded, very similar to this. Uh, Mott Foundation gave twenty five million dollars to to a project to help get that innovation um, presence in their uh, community. Um, so I think funding is in place to help something something like this. Um, and the return on investment for art districts inherently in art presence is uh, huge. I mean, it's, it's uh, the artists and the creative minds are the innovators. I'm a huge STEAM advocate. Um, you know, art is at the forefront of anything that changes what it once was. It, it's, it's the innovation arm of uh, the STEM, the STEAM program. I mean, whether you're sweeping floors or whatever it is, it's the creative mind that figures out how to do it better with a you know better tool or better system, um, and we really want to communicate uh, that presence uh, through this uh, space. Yes. Um, have you thought about how more sustainable materials might be incorporated in all of this? As far as um, you know, the other big issue, of course, is environmental 
uh, issues and recovering materials such as, you know, glass or, um, you know, uh, using those kind of reusable materials in some of the... Well, this, this is about as green as you can get because everything is currently existing. We do plan on using the original windows from the basement first and second floors. Uh, we'll probably put newer windows on the third and fourth floor for the innovation lab and the, uh, the housing, but they'll, um, they'll complement the existing architectural uh, elements. But um, no, to reuse a space like this, with uh, it, it's as green as you can go. You don't have to have things you know, shipped here. You don't have to have things made. It's already here. We're just adding on and sort of refining what's uh, existing. This is one of the most solid buildings I've ever been in, and uh, I've had um, you know the builders and everybody that's come through. They're just amazed, as you'll see as we walk through here. Um, it was, I think, during uh, CJ, uh, the the guy who who I purchased from. He was in Battle of the Bulge. He's 96 years old. Um, he lives over off Green Avenue. He's still around. His son used to be one of the tour managers or main sound guys for Weird Al Yankovic. So there's, there's, there's tour boxes from Weird Al in the back. There's boxes of posters and t-shirts, you know, from those shows. Um, it's just a, uh, but CJ had the Riverside trucking business here for about 40 plus years. And he was telling me that they fortified this building. There was incentives for warehouses during war, wartime efforts um, in, to fortify them for future military storage needs. So. I mean, the, the joists over on the, uh, not, on the wooden side are doubled up to about five inches thick. I mean, the wood beams are huge. It's reinforced with uh, Bethlehem steel. He gave me a per, per uh, square foot um, weight. I, I forget it, but it's a, it's a very high rate of uh, what it can accommodate. Um, any more questions? What, what is about the drop ceiling? What does that look like? We, we have a tile over in the uh, back portion of the room you can look up. There's another 30 inches. Um, oh, and, fr and girls, in front of you. That tile, the drop ceiling toward, yep. So we'll, we'll eventually remove that and it'll be a much more grand uh, space. But um, everything you're seeing currently, it's, I mean, this is how, I mean, you, you look at the glass on the windows, it's all, you know, wavy, wavy glass. I mean, look at this window on this office. I mean, it's, it's like you're stepping back in time. So we hope to, to use this catalyst of this old building and then bring the modern, uh, modern uh, edge to it, you know, both with projections and um, you know, other communication uh, devices. Like with that projection, we can use that and have uh, Zoom meetings um, in here. That's, that's a regular activity I'd like to have in here. We could Zoom people in from around the world uh, at the forefront of their industry and meet with people locally. I mean, I think that would be a very engaging and um, an engaging opportunity for our uh, community and the space. And when I was bringing through people, uh, people through here earlier, we're on the second floor and they said, this needs to be an event space. I wasn't thinking event space at that time, but they said, we want to get out of the hotels. We need places like this. And they, they referenced uh, the Ford Paquette plant down in Detroit that was very similar to characters that, uh, characteristics that the uh, second floor here had. Um, and obviously now, it needs to be an event space, and you know, uh, you're overlooking the potential uh, sculpture garden, um, you know, on this side, and then you can walk out and see projections at night. Uh, with being minimally invasive, you know, uh, with projections, you don't have to paint on these walls; you can just project onto the walls. So that can be constantly updated, you know, with content communicating different nonprofits and different visions in our region, and hopefully get visions from other. Uh, you know, some of the best in the uh, world, you know, in New York or Japan or whatever, and work with them to project on these, uh, on these walls here in our town. I'm gonna ask a question about your windows. Uh, I think it's wonderful, the project sounds just spectacular. But I'm wondering, uh, regarding the windows, if there is any consideration given to bird strikes, which is a real problem uh, in any sort of high-rise uh, or even low-rise, for that matter, uh, structure. And I was wondering if perhaps uh, just simple consulting with Audubon or Cornell or you know an outfit like that, just to see what might be done to eliminate that. We certainly have our share of birds around here. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Saginaw Basin Land Conservancy, Zach and um, Trevor, you know, good friends. And I would definitely consult them. I've talked to them about the uh, sculpture park um, opportunity. So 
there's there's a lineage and conversations to be had. Yep. Yes. Um, is there a goal that you hope to get everything done, or are you prioritizing maybe certain parts of the project to roll up first, like the green space versus the event space versus? The I, I think the low hanging fruit is the uh, um, outdoor uh, place making portion. You know, with the uh, sculpture park, you just need, you know, pedestals, you need paths. Um, with the projections, you need projections in, in place. Um, so I, I look at that as the low-hanging fruit, the biggest impact. Um, the inside of the building, I mean, this is a bigger dollar uh, item, and we have to find tenants, you know. So we're talking to Saginaw Valley and the Bay Aranac ISD as potential partner, and, you know, Delta College as potential partners to take, you know, take on the innovation floor. Um, you know, an ISD potentially taking on the uh, maker space. We're still formulating that, um, and we're contacting other you know communities that have places like this and see how they do it and uh, what works best. But uh, there's there's definitely an interest, so we're just going to keep on pushing forward. This has only been a year, you know, from front to back for for majority of this. So if you talked to me a year ago and said how long is this going to take. I'd say 10 years, you know, because, um, but I've learned a lot. And like I said, there's a lot of incentives in place to help a project like this. Um, so I think that could take it to an outdoor placemaking and a two year portion to possibly fully developed in five years. But I'm an optimistic person. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, but it's nice to be able to host this. Tuesday we had a uh, rotary in here, uh, 34 people, and Vinny's, you know, came over and uh, dropped off some food. and. There was great conversations and people were really impressed. Uh, it, it was a shorter um, time frame because it's noon and they have to go back to work. So there was a few retirees or people that didn't have to go back to work that uh, toured through. Um, and then to see this group here, it's if you would have saw what it looked like a year ago without heat, without uh, you know the electric and without uh, the water, we just we just got the bathroom working on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yep. I never thought I'd be so excited to get a bathroom uh, up and running. <laughs> um, but like I said, we, we're, we're getting artifacts. Another unique thing about this uh, building is um, there's still storage items from when it was last, you know, the storage company. So you go on the fourth floor and there's items from the uh, 50s and 60s up there. Um, you open up drawers and there's, you know, items that were in there that haven't been touched in, you know, 80, 70 plus years, 60 plus years. Um, and then each floor it gets a little bit uh, newer. Uh, but the, the story to be told, so there was a record console that I opened up and there's the, uh, the Ballad of the Third Street Bridge. Do you remember when the, the bridge fell in? I didn't know there was a record, I didn't know there was liner notes, but I opened this thing up and there's this piece of Bay City history on touch that's been sort of encased for the last, you know, since 78, 79. And uh, there's a perfect 45 record in there. Eric Jyla, he's listed on the liner notes along with Andy Rogers and a whole variety of other uh, people. And um, this place is filled with that. I mean, there's scribbles on the walls as we go through on the, uh, you know, the wood beams, you know, from people that have worked here. A uh, little uh, homage to themselves or whoever. It's just, uh, it's, it's been a very, um, interesting project to be working with and I, I like I'm, I'm excited and heartened you know by how the community is sort of wrapping about uh, around this uh, project any more questions shoot uh, but it's a it's a side note um, since I, I've been here for three years wandering the building and have you addressed the stray kitten stray cat situation <laughs> by the, the loading dock area where there's I mean, there's a there's a county employee who actually feeds them every day, okay, so approximately, yeah, fed. approximately seven in the morning. And I, I had a camera out there, and there was a red fox that I have on camera that came uh, to eat out of that. Um, and then there was deer before we cleared this land, living back there. Um, and you don't think in the city, but we're right on the riverfront, so they're they're just coming off the side of the river and uh, popping over here. Um, but yeah, it's county employee. And apparently Jess and uh, uh, Jordan, who used to own the uh, Records Electric Kitsch downtown, I think they first were helping those cats, and then when they moved on, this county employee sort of. So they're, they're being looked after. Eventually they'll, who knows what we'll do with them. Uh, they'll be in good hands though, I guarantee that. So I'm all in 
start to finish, what, what would the total investment on this project be? Uh, uh, basically uh, 11 million, 11 million dollars. And that's the outdoor place making, you know, the sculpture park um, and then the uh, full, full building. The building itself, seven and a half, eight million from the estimates that we're, we're having come through to modernize it and get everything where it needs to be. Yes. Have you started to approach any of the philanthropic type uh, foundations for funding for this? Yeah, I mean, one of the first uh, organizations I talked to was a Community Foundation, and they're set up to help people as nonprofits. We weren't a nonprofit at that time. So um, I had a, a lawyer uh, who pro bono um, helped out with that process. So we had a steering committee sort of encompassing all the things that we're looking at doing. And uh, we actually got an approval letter probably about a month ago, and it was probably sitting in my mailbox a week for a week's time before I realized that it wasn't supposed to, we weren't supposed to get approval until after uh, Thanksgiving. So um, now we can start reaching both as, you know, for profit. And there's, there's grants, you know, through the, uh, the state and the federal government to help projects like this that aren't nonprofit. But also, yes, now we do have that nonprofit status so we can start collaborating. And I see, I see the opportunity for collaboration uh, pretty big on something like this. So let's say uh, the artist in residence and the sculpture, you know, portion. The nonprofits we could uh, work with and have this have the artist in residence on site to help make um, a uh, whatever the artists in that nonprofit the vision of that nonprofit in sculpture form, um, and have maybe you know those outside you know in the sculpture park that eventually go to their facility. Um, with that story of that nonprofit and that artist, and I think that would be a, a unique way to sort of um, collaborate with other organizations to help tell their story a little bit differently. Um, and uh, again, with the projections and you know, things that haven't be, even been th thought of, you know, this is stuff we can uh, do here. There'll be incentive when you walk through these doors. You know, it's you know, think out of the box and let's engage in ways that we haven't engaged before, and you know, try to figure figure it out. I mean, the momentum of downtown, I, I look at this as a missing, uh, this is that raw industrial art space, Bay City didn't know it needed. Um, and when you go through the back, uh, there's these one and a half inch steel I-beams that sort of, you see in New York City and you know Detroit and Grand Rapids, and this is that structure that is celebrated in these communities. And we, we celebrate our historic places, but a lot of the places have been turned, and which is phenomenal. We have this, our historical downtown. We don't have um, um, a fully mixed-use art, you know, space. I think it's sort of it's that last uh, last portion that can help push push Bay City forward. And when you get that art arm in full motion, uh, with artists and residents and people working and you know, uh, blacksmithing, you know, uh, connecting to our past, and then with the 3D printing connecting to our future, uh, I think it's just we we got to show our kids. Uh, that we care and show them opportunity. I mean, if you look at the uh, statistics, the kids are graduating and they're leaving. We need places like this. We need places that are engaged um, and, and communicating. Something where their cousins and their friends from out of state or out of town can come here and say, this place is cool. And as you know, Bay City isn't cool until somebody from outside comes here and says that it's cool. Um, and we, we, I mean, the, the riverfront is phenomenal. What the developments have done, the programming, you know, at the state, uh, what Mike has done with uh, the the um, the programming at the uh, Friendship Shell. I mean, we're we're on a rocket. Um, I think this is just that other element um, that can really uh, really help push us more forward, as art does. All right. Any more questions? How many people are going to want to go through on the uh, tour? All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to have a buddy buddy system. Um, there's you know, the staircase doesn't have uh, uh, handrails, so I want everybody to be on their best behavior <laughs> and look out for one another and make sure um, that we're going through this space. Uh, there's a few boards on the uh, second floor that are up, nothing nothing major, but just watch where you're going and um, we'll have a good tour. Any, any more uh, questions? Great, great, great idea, great presentation. Yeah. Thank you.
And I want to thank the Bay County Historical Museum again. You guys were wonderful. Thank you for setting this up. Um, I appreciate your efforts in general, but also for this focus to uh, um, bringing everybody here and um, this presentation, helping set, out, uh, set it up. So thank you. My pleasure. All right, awesome. All right, so this, this area, um, like I said, we had the blue carpet in here. We, we uh, exposed the uh, oak flooring and polished everything up. That bar that uh, is over there it didn't come with the building. That was actually purchased online, um, as a lot of these other items have. Uh, Facebook Marketplace has been invaluable at getting this, this place furnished. Uh, these blue chairs came from the uh, third floor um, as it was a storage facility, and there's items you know, throughout that we've been uh, bringing in here. Um, I can't remember where else I was going to go, but uh, if you want, look in that, that hole, that tile that's removed, and you'll be able to see the, uh, the uh, roof or the uh, ceiling of this room, 30 inches uh, more that it'll be exposed in a much more grand presence and, and eventually. So I'm trying to keep this as an analog room. I have, uh, in one of those built-ins, I have about 300 records. I have the record player here. I've got a variety of books, both for makerspace, photography, and uh, art related uh, content. So I'm trying to keep this as an analog room. I have this printer as part of my printing business. Um, I can't, I want to put it in that room, but I can't fit it through the door. Uh, so I was trying to keep that technology out of here, but um, that's where we sit right now. And if, if you don't know, I've got a printing business over on uh, 3rd Street, you know, Golden Gallery and Custom Framing. We do large format printing. We do a restoration of old family photos. Um, we can print on metal, acrylic, canvas, you know, a whole variety of uh, things. So I plan on moving production here and keeping that as a showroom over on uh, 3rd Street. And then, so I'll have a component of this uh, space, but the rest of it will be, you know, community uh, based. All right. Is it going to show a video? It's probably good to watch it now. All right. Yeah, let's, yes. let's do it. It's... Here's the uh, I-beams I was talking about. This side was built in approximately 1918, and it's all solid I-beam construction. Um, hardwood subfloors, hardwood top floors. It's ridiculously overbuilt. It's got all the original windows and all the original uh, doors. And we plan on this space that we're in, we plan on making a, uh, a wall right here this would be an indoor portion of the outdoor event space and probably have bathrooms here for people to utilize. That would be closed off where the conveyor belt is and utilized as a separate uh, business uh, portion. So a little bit smaller event space, but you know, I think something that is well 
would be well uh, used. These doors, these doors are 100, 100 plus years old, and they work. And the original hinges are on them. I mean, not, nothing has changed or been replaced on them. And this this back portion would be. Um, we need to rebuild this uh, deck, but that's where musicians could play. We'd have a, a outdoor area with uh, art and uh, eating space. And then we have all the way out to the uh, road, which you know could be parking or more sculpture. Um, and right behind us, where that yellow wall starts, that's where um, uh, Valley Roofing starts, which is a very good neighbor when you have three roof decks on a side of a <laughs> size building like this. I have one inside this building. Well, when I when I first got in here, there was people living in the back. There was uh, drug needles. Uh, the grass was about five foot tall. I didn't know how to um, really interact with them. Do you call the sheriff? Do you uh, engage them? And, um, That's a tough I mean, situation. Yeah. And we we. I just, I just didn't want to get too, too involved. I figured if we just kept on, um, you know, cleaning the space up, they would, they would find another uh, space. Um, and I talked to a few people about it, and there's, there's uh, support programs, so mm -hmm. hopefully that went in the right uh, direction. The cats that uh, somebody was talking about, they're, they're fed on this side of the uh, building. There's an employee. It's an orange cat and this other uh, um, black and white cat. But it's a beautiful roof deck. If you want to rotate through and just sort of look at that back area, it's pretty, quite unique. All right, and then if you come back here, this this is the uh, area we plan on having um, the maker space. So CNC routing tables, woodworking. I love the doors. Isn't that great? Yeah, I mean, these, these doors are 100 plus years old. I mean, they, they kept everything intact. So th this area, um, I mean, it's as sturdy as the day it was built. We, we've had some water uh, coming in over there. There's some boards that need to be replaced, but um, overall it's in really great condition. The original skylights on both sides. Um, so just just think of this as you know woodworking CNC routing table uh, area, um, a little bit dirtier area. As we move forward, it gets a little bit cleaner. And then obviously on the innovation lab on the third floor, that would be computer lab, glass walls, um, and more of a modern uh, feel up there. Down here, we're going to try to keep as much exposed uh, of the old um, that we can. <clears throat> And we've had two architectural uh, firms come through. Uh, they said, I didn't think we'd be, be able to keep as much exposed as they're saying that we can, um, both with the windows and the exposed beams, et cetera. So it sounds like we'll be able to uh, keep a lot of the character in place. The scale, last time it was inspected, this is probably the original scale when it was the uh, um, seed company. The last time it was inspected was in 1969. There's a stamp on there uh, sort of showcasing that. And if you want to come through here, we'll go on the east side of the building, which is the original 1902-1903 uh, side of the building. And this, as you're walking past, this is a—it's an original ironing board made out of iron. Um, I, I was picking up a credenza down in Jackson, Michigan. This guy that owned a, um, a dry cleaner—he was getting rid of uh, things, and he had all these uh, industrial sewing machines. Which, if you notice, I have some industrial sewing machines back there. And he said he'd give them to me um, for potential workforce uh, opportunities to teach people how to um, work on upholstery. That's an opportunity we could do here that nobody in, uh, else in the area is doing. And then also uh, sale making. I mean, the modern sales aren't made that way, but we could uh, do some of the old sale uh, making techniques uh, with those machines. And whatever else, you know, we, and there's probably other uh, things. But yeah, ironing board made out of iron. That thing's heavier than the sin. And here is an old uh, conveyor, probably um, from you know the 1900s or 1930s. Maybe when it was the grocer company or the seed company. Here's the uh, the solid wood I beams that I was referencing earlier. 
Um, dang it, I think I'm running low on battery here. Uh, um, so you can see the Bethlehem steel imprints up there. And then these uh, joists, they've been doubled up. So they're almost six inch, five inch uh, joists. I mean, it's ridiculously uh, overbuilt and supported. Um, and if you notice around the perimeter, all the original windows and doors are uh, still here. If you wanna... This side, um, you can see all the exposed uh, beams. Obviously, we're on the newer, newer side. Uh, hardwood subfloors, uh, beautiful steel beams. This is all maple flooring. When you walk through that portion in that doorway, we uh, shined up a little piece of the floor showing you what it would look like when it's uh, polished up. We, you can see all the original windows. We plan on exposing, you know, all those opening, taking the aluminum siding off, and um, you know, maybe put an outdoor window or the in, interior uh, shades for the R value. Those uh, accordion shades that sort of help with the energy costs. But this this side will be an overflow for the event space, but a primary photography space and creative space uh, for the building. And we might put an apartment back in this uh, portion and have storage. And we're also going to need egress, you know, bigger stairways. So those will probably be in that area as well. This, this is that sheet music that I, uh, or not sheet music, the liner notes. The washboard player on it. Yep. Yeah, you said, let's see. There it is. Look at you. So yeah, we did that at our studio in the Davidson building. Stand okay. there, I'll take your picture. Well, that's your job. Right. No, here. Here, Fred, get in the picture with me. Oh. That's so cool. So this, this side of the building is going to be the primary event space. So think of all the windows open, these exposed beams, the floor is polished up. Um, I mean, it's got character for uh, days. And I think it'll be a very popular event space for our uh, city. Get outside of the hotels and offer an alternative that's not a barn. Um, yeah, that's 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 closer to downtown. So we, you, you know you can have that feel of a barn, but also have the uh, the walkability of our riverfront, etc. So on this floor, um, this is the floor we plan on having as the innovation floor. Uh, so think of 3D printing, glass walls, uh, new windows, drywall up top here, but um, the old character of the uh, wood beams and the polished wood floor. And uh, we'd have, you know, computer lab, glass dividers, um, really modern meets old um, atmosphere up here. And with people living up top, we thought it would be a great barrier between the event space and then people living up top. These people would probably be gone around seven, you know, six at night. There's a need for housing, but I just don't, if we had, you know, two floors of housing, I think that's too much, too many people. In a, and this is the shortest floor of the whole building. When we go upstairs, it's 12 foot to 10 foot sloped roof. Um, much more grand uh, space up there. This is the top floor. Uh, this is a 12 foot to 10 foot sloped roof. Uh, the water rolls off on the east side. Um, that's where we've had some water issues. We need about $150,000 worth of repair on the uh, east wall, uh, brick wall. There's a company out of Lansing that gave me a bid that we have pretty good confidence in. But um, when the, uh, it's got a gutter over there and when the gutter overflows or leaks, the water drips down, freezes, and it pops those uh, bricks. So, um, it's still structurally sound, but it, it, it does need uh, quite a bit of repair at some point. And you'll see the staining on the uh, ceiling. It's not rotted, it's only stains. It's a hardwood from 120 years ago, um, which is pretty remarkable to be in such a good condition. A lot of the people that I brought up who are in this industry, who've been on fourth floors such as this, they talk about how the uh, floor, uh, the floors are, you know, two foot, three foot, it's, you can't even walk over them. I mean, it's just uh, ruined. This is actually in really good condition for a yeah, fourth floor. Most of it being very usable, we'll sand it down and use these original maple uh, floors. 
And as you see these items, I mean, we're on the top floor. This is some of the older items in the uh, building. We have uh, old, old cribs. There's uh, TVs from the 50s over in the back. Uh, these mattresses, I don't know. I mean, what year they were coming around, but. Yeah, look at these TVs. <laughs> I think I had one like that. <laughs> so what do you think, Fred? Great. Ghost it's, like, it's like a time capsule. I want, I want to keep a no few ele elements of these items, you know, when we, uh, when everything gets uh, built, just to show sort of those uh, eras, the decades.